Look with me please if you would in the scriptures in Acts the 20th chapter and 2 Corinthians 4. Acts 20, 2 uh, Timothy uh, 4. And we've been on a series for a while now that we're calling, anybody know what it is? Faithful to finish. And we're talking about finishing. Finishing what? Finishing your course. Finishing your race. Finishing your life. You might say, well, I, it may be a little early for me to be thinking about that. I don't think so. Mm-mm. If you're 12 years old, it's not too early to be thinking about it. Because those of you that have lived for a little while, how many know what happens when you're 12? You look up in a few days and you're 40. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> well, what's going to happen when you look up in another few days? It'll be time to leave here. This life is so short. And it is foolish, foolish to act like you're going to live down here doing what you're doing indefinitely. In a very short amount of time, you're going to leave here. And so between now and then, what should you be doing? What is the best use of your remaining days and strength and opportunity? You know, we, uh, we lay hands on our uh, young people, young adults and youth at their graduation services, high school, college, that kind of thing. And one of the reasons we do that, we usually read that passage from Ecclesiastes that said, serve the Lord in your youth. He's talking about while you're strong, and then he goes on to list what happens when you get old. <laughs> you're not as peppy <laughs> as you used to be. <laughs> well, a lot of people, they use their youth on frivolous foolish, chasing fantasies, you know, changing their major five times, changing their profession and job five times, changing marriages five times. This is because of not being led, not submitting to Jesus' Lordship, not seeking Him, finding out what His plan is for your life and being led by the Spirit. There is a path. There is a course we're supposed to be on. Hmm? And if you're wise, you'll do what's necessary to find it, fulfill it, and one day finish it. Hallelujah. In Acts 20, Paul said this about this, this subject. He said uh, in verse 23, 2023, he said, the Holy Spirit's witnessing in every city saying bonds and afflictions are waiting on me, abiding me. He's talking about at Jerusalem. He was on his way there. Verse 24, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear to myself so that I might what? Finish my course with joy. And the ministry that I've received of the Lord Jesus to testify, that's what we're talking about during the offering, the gospel. The gospel of the grace of God. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said, my, my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. Two or three different translations, today's English and good news, they say, I only want to complete my mission and finish the work the Lord Jesus gave me to do. Should we have this same kind of mentality? Should we be mission-minded? Now, friend, whether you've believed it or realized it or not, you are not here by random chance. God knew you. He knew you would exist before you were born. You might have surprised your parents, but you didn't surprise him. 
They were involved in the forming of your body. They were not involved in the creation of your spirit. God gave you spirit. He's the father of spirits. And so you owe and every created being owes its existence to him. And we are created, sit out loud, I am created, I am created for, his for his pleasure. Amen. Mm -hmm. to, to do what pleases him. Jesus said, I didn't come down from heaven to do my own will. He said, I came to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. Hallelujah. He also said, I delight to do your will, O God. There's a path. And if you seek it, you'll find it. God will see to it that you do. But if you seek your own ideas and your own plans, that's the biggest threat to the plan of God in your life is your plan. Because you can, you can get caught up chasing that and years go by. Right? Years that will wind up being wasted. Go to 2 Timothy, please, the fourth chapter. 2 Timothy 4. Aren't you thankful for the Word of God? Oh, yeah. All the answers are in this book. You said all the answers? Yes. <laughs> all the, if you have eyes to see. 2 Timothy 4. In verse uh, 6... Paul said, I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He realized that he is at the end of his journey down here. He is at the end of his life. He's about to leave here. Prayers get previews. If you pray, spend some time with God, you'll pick up the own things. You'll have a sense now, you won't know everything, but you'll know some things. Part of the ministry of the Spirit of God is to lead and guide you into all the truth and show you things to come. Is that right? Yes. You, you'll get glimpses. Prayers get previews. If you never pray, then you, you won't. Things will surprise you. <laughs> but he... he he knows because he communes with the Lord on a regular basis. He knows I'm winding up. I'm at the end here. And he said, verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Don't you like that? Don't you want to be able to say that? When you know you are nearing the end of your life down here. You're, you're, you're finishing up your course. They tell us that across the, the face of the planet with somewhat seven, eight billion people, that two people die about every second. Every second, two more, two more, two more, every second. More people than that are being born. But of those scores of thousands that will die all over the face of the planet today in the next 24 hours, I assure you, many of them, when they realize they're breathing their last and they're leaving here, they will be thinking, I, th I thought I had more time. I thought I had more time. And many of them will not be old. Many of them are young and middle-aged. And so assuming you've got a lot of years left is just that. It's an assumption. If you listen to the Lord and you follow him, he can keep you. Right? He can keep you. And with long life, he wants to satisfy you. But even at that, I mean, if you live to be 100 years old plus, it's a, it's a vapor, the scripture said. It's a mist. And a lot of folks are already halfway there. <laughs> Is it too early no. to be thinking about finishing up? No. And how are you going to finish up? 
Do you want to be able, when you realize you're there, you're, you're at the end of this thing, do you want to be able to say, I fought a good fight. Yes. I, I, I didn't just give up. I, I, I didn't just wimp out. Huh? I didn't just quit every time something became challenging. I fought the good fight of faith. I kept the faith. Hallelujah. And I'm not leaving here with half the stuff I should have done, undone. I finished. Don't you like, don't you like it? I finished my course. Hallelujah. A lot of us, the Lord tells is coming. We may still have some days to accomplish this. But we best get to it. Right? We, 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 we need to give ourselves to this thing fully and completely. Because the, the moments are clicking by so fast. Keep reading. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Verse 7, I have kept the faith. And henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And he, is he the only one going to get a crown? No, not to me only, but to all of them that love is appearing. Do your diligence to come shortly to me, he said. This is Timothy he's talking to. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia, only Luke is with me. So we have no reason to think that Demas finished his course. We don't know, but the scripture doesn't tell us that he got anything straightened out. Now, you can look from afar and think how in the world could anybody decide they'd rather do stuff in the world than help Paul in his ministry? But if you'd have been there, things would have been a whole lot then like they are now. Flesh is flesh. The world is the world. Judas decided he wanted money more than helping Jesus. Now that might just seem bizarre, but it just goes to show you can be involved in the best ministry on the planet and get bored and decide you want something else. You want some flesh satisfaction. You, you want something more exciting to your flesh and your mind. I don't think that Demas had a case against Paul to say, well, no, just wasn't good enough ministry for me to stay hooked. I don't think Judas had a case against Jesus. Is that right? To say, no, Jesus was mean to us. And I just didn't agree with everything he preached. And now you're laughing, but see, how do you leave a ministry like Jesus? People did, not just Judas. Do you remember when he preached that message on eat my flesh and drink my blood? Yeah. Thousands left him and never came back to another service. They said, that's nuts. That's crazy. We can't go along with that. What is he preaching? Cannibalism? That's bizarre. We're done. Take our name off the, the, the mail list. Don't contact us again. We will not be back. Thousands did that with Jesus. And so Demas leaves Paul. He wasn't the only one. It is, it is not an accident that he says Demas has forsaken me, verse 10. The very next verse, he says, Luke's still with me. How many think Dr. Luke was faithful? Yes. Same man God used to pen the gospel account of Luke and the book of Acts. He said, Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with you, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. 
one verse, of course this wasn't written in chapter and verse, so it's just a sentence or so apart. He mentions two people that had forsaken him, choosing not to help him in the ministry. Mark was one of them. But now he says, get Mark and bring him because he's profitable to me for the ministry. What, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, friend, this is some of the best news you ever heard in your life. You can miss it badly. You can take the wrong exit and get off the plan of God. You can forsake God and his ministry and jump out of where God put you. And that is not the end. I said, that is not the end. It does not have to be the end because that's exactly what Mark did. And yet, before the story is over, the Spirit, not just Paul, the Holy Spirit is saying, that Mark, he's a winner. Huh? He's, he's useful. He is helpful to the ministry of Jesus. He's helpful to the ministry of Paul getting the gospel out. Let, let's go to the book of Acts. You're going to help me, help me teach this, help me preach this? Acts 13. Now the Bible talks about this, who at the time was a young man called Mark, but actually he's called John several places in the scriptures because that was his first name apparently. His name was John Mark. John Mark. So you'll have to read more than one passage to get the whole picture. You'll think, well, he's talking about a different guy. No, John and Mark are the same guy. It's John Mark. And uh, in Acts 13, Acts 13 was the launching of uh, Paul and um, Barnabas, you could, you could say the launching of their international ministry. Chapter 13, verse 1, there were in the church, it was in Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, uh, Lucius, and um, Manian, and the last one was Saul, who was later called Paul. As they ministered to the uh, Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. When they fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. And they being sent forth by the Holy Spirit departed into Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. When they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews and they had also John to their minister. Now this is that same Mark. John Mark. He was very young at this time. And the word minister uh, literally, literally can be translated serve. Serve. We have no uh, evidence that he was preaching. Uh, Saul and Barnabas, later Paul and Barnabas were doing that. But uh, there are always a bunch of natural things to do. And if you are going to give yourself to the word and prayer, then you'll, it helps you not to be interrupted with all the natural things. And the ministry of helps is one of the most important ministries there is Amen. in the body of Christ. Um, Phyllis and I spent the first 20 years of our ministry in the ministry of helps. And really, still, we're in the ministry of helps to Jesus. That's right. Even though we, we head up a ministry. You know, the Holy Spirit is in the ministry of helps. He's called the helper, is that right? So uh, nobody's belittling, belittling you when they call you helper. He's called helper. But uh, um, it is so important that natural things are taken care of. And so uh, they brought 
John Mark with them on this international trip to go preach the gospel. It's missionary work where the gospel had never been preached before. People have never heard anything about Jesus. Many times where they spoke different languages, where the city is filled with uh, temples to false idols. I mean, this is uh, uh, not for the weak. This is, this is uh, real work. And so John Mark, I'm sure he was excited about going. Got to be excited. He may have never left home. In those days, people didn't travel like they do now, you know. And so we are actually leaving home, going to leave the country, going to see new peoples. Well, the first thing they ran into was sorcery. <laughs> Verse 6, there was a sorcerer. Elamus, he resisted him. Saul, verse 9, filled with the Holy Spirit, set his eyes on him and said, The hand of the Lord is on you. And man, the power of God hit him and uh, he, he couldn't see anymore. And the deputy was astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. And this is how they get kicked off. <laughs> Somebody say, We're off. Preaching the gospel. <laughs> now, uh, verse uh, 13. Th this is really their first stop, you know. And when John Mark sees that, and you know he hadn't had mama's meatloaf in a while. <laughs> and he's having to wash his clothes out by the creek bank. And it just, you know, it's not as amazing and exciting as he thought it might be. And in some ways, this is too exciting. <laughs> the people romanticize these things. And when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Pergamon, Pamphylia, and John did what? He did what? Departed from them and returned to mama. He went home. He said, uh-uh, this ain't for me. <laughs> this is not for me. Don't you remember Paul giving a list of that they were in uh, perils of robbers, perils of false brethren, perils in the ocean, perils, perils, perils. What are they doing? They are, they're on the edge, brother. They're, they're out there where nobody believes in God. Nobody's ever heard about Jesus and nobody's wanting to support them and help them. Nobody even knows who they are. And John said, uh-uh. Uh I, I got to go home. And he went home. And left them without their help. The proverb says, trust in an unfaithful person in the time of need is like a, a broken foot, or a foot out of joint, rather, or a broken tooth. So what is that? Well, when you bite down on something, you're counting on that tooth to be there. That's right. Is that right? And, and get the job done for you. When you get up in a minute and you want to leave this uh, chair, and you take a step and you put your weight on that, on that foot, you're counting on, huh? You're, you're, you're counting on that foot and that ankle to hold you up. If it's unfaithful and it ain't there for you, and it rolls over, well, you got an issue. Just made it a lot harder for you. And so now you got to get you a crutch or something and drag the unfaithful leg. Makes the whole trip harder. Come on, can you see this? So they don't have their help. So uh, the guys are doing all their own natural chores they're having to go get the water. They're having to build the fire. They're having to, you know, pack and unpack. They got to do everything themselves. No help. 
They thought they had help. They brought help. But their help bailed. What are we talking about? What's, what's, what's the subject? Huh? Faithful to do what? To finish. Faithful to finish. Well, if you skip on down to the 15th chapter, they finished that trip in spite of not having their help. They had miracles. Thousands were saved. They um, uh, laid the foundation for churches, and churches started. Uh, John Mark missed a marvelous opportunity, didn't he? Because he would, be, would get part of the reward for the founding of some of the very first churches that were ever founded in the world. He missed out on that when it was right there for him to be a part of. All he had to do is just stick it out just a few weeks, just a few months, and he'd have been back home eating mama's meatloaf anyway. Huh? Time's passing. How many know you can, you can deal with a lot of things for a few days? Huh? Yeah. Anytime we've been out and away from the comforts of home and, you know, especially if you travel much, the food's going to be different. The accommodations are going to be different. Sometimes it's a surprise to your stomach. <laughs> you got to believe God and, but, and you know, and, and people have different ideas about what they like. And, but I, 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 that's what I do. I, I just, I just tell myself, relax, relax. You, you'll be out of here in what? In a few days, in a week or two, you know, you can deal with a lot of things, yeah. right? Yeah. For a, a few days, a few weeks to get the job done. And if you're going to be there longer, well, go ahead and believe for your own. If you're going to be there long term, believe for your own stuff. Get it set up the way you want it to be. But in the, uh, when they finish their, their trip and their ministry, at the end of the 15th chapter, It says in verse uh, 36, some days after Paul said to Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of God, word of the Lord. See how they do. Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. Now you find out this John is, is Mark. But Paul thought not good. To take him with them who departed from them, from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from another. So this was an issue. This was a deal. And you find out if you read the passages, uh, John Mark is Barnabas' sister's son. This is his nephew. This is his close relative. And so when they get ready to go round two on their missionary trips, and really, you know, in some ways, depending on what's going on, this could be easier. You already got contacts, already got churches there, right? Could be. And so... Barnabas says, no, we, we got to take John Mark with us. And uh, the scripture says he was determined to do it. And if you look up the word, one translation is he was bent on it. He, 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 he's, he's trying to force this on Paul. We are taking him. And the scripture said Paul didn't think it was good. That's a, that's a softer expression. <laughs> thought not right then bent on it but, and yet he wasn't yielding either he said no no I don't think it's good to take him you know he left us in, in, in the very front of our trip he didn't go uh, to the work with us we didn't have any help the whole trip had to get our own water build our own fires do our own packing and unpacking had no help at all so not, now he's not saying I'm writing the boy off forever. He just said it, it's only been what? 
Weeks? Months? No, I'm not ready to take him. And so the contention was so sharp that Barnabas said, well, then uh, we'll just go our own missionary trip. He was bent on it. And uh, Paul said, well, okay, fine. And he, he wound up with Silas. That's how Paul and Silas came to be. And so uh, Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. Paul chose Silas and they departed being recommended by the brethren. <laughs> Didn't say Barnabas and Mark were recommended by the brethren. They're kind of doing their own thing. And if you look at the book of Acts, the narrative follows who? Yeah, Paul and Silas. Not, not Barnabas and Mark. It follows Paul and Silas. And you might think, well, you know, Mark missed it. That's, that's the end of what Mark... No, no, it's not. We just got through reading. 2 Timothy 4. What did he say? This is some time later now. This is years later. And, and Paul now has, after years of ministry, he, he realized I'm, I'm about at the end of my, uh, my run here. And he said, Demas has left us. So did, did Paul experience people forsaking him and leaving him more than once? Yes. Yeah, he did. And, you know, should we be shocked if people are unfaithful? Or if people quit? Or if people unhook in the middle of something? No, and it doesn't, and it doesn't necessarily mean that we've done something wrong. I mean, you could, be, you could do the best job possible like Jesus did and still have people like Judas want to quit. But besides that, if you're on the other end, even if people didn't treat you the best, if the Lord sent you somewhere, I recommend you stay where he sent you. Right? And tough it out. Like we said, you, you can deal with a lot of things for a short period of time. Right? And just stay hooked. Go where you're sent. Stay where you're stationed. Be faithful. Say it out loud. Help your neighbor say, be faithful. Be faithful. be faithful. And so you'll find that after this, after this, Mark apparently, he realized he made a mistake and he wants to be in the ministry. And so, for, for instance, in Philemon 24, just one chapter in Philemon, he, he says, Marcus, talking about John Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas are my fellow laborers. He calls Mark at this point a fellow laborer like himself. And we just got through reading in 2 Timothy 4. He said, bring Mark with you. Calls for him by name. Would you bring Mark? Talking about John Mark, the one that left him years ago. Bring him because he is helpful to me. He's profitable to me for the ministry. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. A trick of the enemy. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Go to Matthew. I'm excited about this. There's such victory here. Oh, the Lord is so good. Go to Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Yeah, he says, uh, when he mentions Demas has forsaken me, the very next verse he says, but now uh, get Mark and bring him with you when you come. Uh, the Amplified says, for he is very helpful to me for the ministry. The Weymouth says, he's a great help to me in the ministry. Just because you miss it, just because you miss it badly, that's not the end. I said, that's not the end. You know, the Lord reminded me in the book of Revelation, there's a lot of talk about Jezebel in some people's circles. You, there are whole movements about fighting the spirit of Jezebel. I don't know that there is such a thing. There was a woman, a false prophetess, named Jezebel. There was a character in the Old Testament named Jezebel. 
And the Bible talks about how all the bad things this person had done. And the Lord was warning in the book of Revelation about the judgments that was going to come on her. But then he says in the last phrase, he said, unless she repents. What? (laughs) What? Unless she repents. And yet Jezebel is not held up as an example to follow. You know what made Jezebel Jezebel? Wouldn't repent. If she'd have repented, could have been a whole different story. Whole different outcome. Have you ever read about King Manasseh in the Old Testament? You talk about an evil guy. I mean, he, he, he's got to be near the top of the list. Evil. You, t- you don't even want to know some of the things he did. Evil. Evil. And I mean, not just for a year or two. For decades, this man plunged the country into the depths of the most sordid, twisted. I mean, he burns babies. He, he just does the most awful stuff. And when judgment is coming on him and the whole nation, the Bible said he humbled himself and repented. And the Bible said God had mercy on him and told him that the judgment would be stayed to, in, during his lifetime. What? The mercy of God endures forever. The thing that people get into is they won't repent. They won't change. And sometimes it's because of the lies the devil's feeding them. Oh, it's too late. You've messed up too bad. You've gone too far. No, it's not true. The mercy of the Lord endures forever. Oh, somebody say his mercy endures. His mercy endures. His mercy endures forevermore. See, people have not because they didn't ask. That's the only thing that kept them. In Matthew 21, Matthew 21 and 28. He said, uh, a certain man, Jesus is is teaching here. He said, a certain man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, what? I will not. What is that? (laughs) That's, that's, That's rebellion. That's, huh? Yeah, that's, I will not. I'm not going to do it. Help me. Read read the rest of the verse. Stop right there. Stop right there. But what? Was that the end of the story? Somebody say afterward. Afterward. But afterward, he did what? He repented. repented. Uh, One of the big things repent means is to change. To change. He repented. He changed. And he went. Read read the rest of it. The other son. He came to the second. And he said likewise. Go work in my field. And he answered and said. I go sir. (laughs) Oh man. Respectful. Right. Responsive. Obedient. But. There's a difference between talking. (laughs) And doing. He said, I'm going, sir. But what? Didn't go. Didn't go. So what he did at the first was good. But what he did at the last was bad. He said he was going first, but then lastly, didn't go. What mattered most? What he did last. I said what he did last. Is what mattered most. This is some of the best news you ever heard in your life. Huh? It's what he did last. Do you remember? Jesus is hanging on the cross. Two thieves. Hanging beside him. 
And one of them said, we're here, I'm going to paraphrase, justifiably because of what we've done. So this is one of the last things they're ever going to do. And one of them turns and says, Jesus, would you remember me when you come into your kingdom? He said, I'm going to paraphrase, I sure will. You're going to be with me in paradise. We know. The scripture tells us it was justified. They got the death penalty. These are bad guys. But we don't talk about what they did the previous 40 years of their life. Only thing we talk about is they got to go to paradise with Jesus. Why? Because of what they did last. One of the big surprises when you get to heaven is going to be who's there <laughs> and who's not there. <laughs> Don't you remember Jesus talked about, he said there are many that are first that's going to be last and many that are last is going to be first. This is the kind of thing he's talking about right here. Why? Because of what they did last. People talk about deathbed salvations and deathbed confessions. One of the greatest mercies in existence. Huh? We, we've had people that we've ministered to and our, our teams have ministered to in the um, uh, rest homes and what have you that were, you know, 80 years old, 90 years old and this and that. And uh, they got saved when the team came there and then died next week. Oh, yeah. You think, Whoo, that was close, brother. Is that right? yeah. they, they almost missed heaven. They almost went to hell. And, and I don't know all the stuff they did the previous 90 years, but what mattered most? Yeah. What mattered most was what they did last. Amen. That finally, in the end, they did come around they did say, I'm going to do it. Huh? Just like that guy. I mean, he started out bad in the first. He was going the wrong way. I will not. But then he repented. Oh, repentance is a gift. I said repentance is a gift. He repented, went, and accomplished the will of his father. And he said, which one did the will of his father? They said the first. And he said, Verily, I'm saying to you, the publicans and harlots are getting in the kingdom of God ahead of you. Now, that made them mad, I'm sure. <laughs> these, these were the theologians with the degrees, you know, religious leaders. He said, John came in the way of righteousness. You didn't believe him. The publicans and harlots believed him. You, when you had seen it, you didn't repent afterwards. That word afterward can also be translated last of all. You didn't repent afterward that you might believe him. Everybody say afterward. 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 It's not just all the mistakes that you make in this life. It's what you do after that. It's what you do last that's going to count the most. Yes. Go with me in closing to, to Luke. Is this okay? Luke. Are we still talking about finishing our course? Yeah, we are. Is it possible to get off course badly, to mess up badly, but that not be the end? Huh? Not the end. Not the end. John Mark wound up doing a lot of good ministry before his life was over. And by the time Paul's getting ready to go, even though he was unreliable, he was unfaithful. He bailed on them at the first, in the beginning. You know, some people that make bad mistakes, when they get straightened out, they will be some of the best people you ever had. Is that right? Why? Because they, they say, I ain't never doing that again. I, I am done with that. Is that right? <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, think about uh, Paul himself when he was Saul. Right? persecuting the church, doing all that stuff. But that's not what he's remembered for. Hmm? He's not even remembered as Saul. 
Paul, beloved apostle. Hallelujah. In uh, Luke, I think it's the 15th chapter. You know this, this story, but man, it never, never gets old. Luke 15, verse 11. A certain man had two sons. That's just how that other story started out, right? Two sons. He's showing you two different paths and outcomes and mentalities. And younger said, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. He divided unto them, both boys, his living. Not many days after that, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey to a far country, and partied. Wasted it. Substance with riotous living. What does that mean? Not clean living. <laughs> riotous living. He's doing everything he can do. He's breaking the rules. He couldn't do all this at father's house. Huh? Daddy didn't allow cocaine parties. <laughs> at the house. Daddy didn't allow all this other stuff. Verse 14. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. Bad timing, man. He ran out of money just as the famine hit. He began to be in want. Couldn't get a job that he wanted. Finally went and joined himself. Didn't say God joined him. He joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine, probably mocking him. Who's going to feed the hogs? Let's send the Jewish boy. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and he would fain have filled his belly with husk that the swine did eat. Now, he has, he's on hard times. Is that right? He's feeding the pigs. Right, we sit down south, slopping the hogs. Anybody know what slopping the hogs is? <laughs> slopping the hogs. And he looks and goes, man, that's a pretty good piece of cornbread. <laughs> Wonder if I could clean that up. <laughs> Somebody say hard times, man. This, this, is a, this is basically, you know, being really tempted to eat out of the, the, the garbage can. That's right. Or worse. And uh, nobody gave to him. Man, when you get out of your place, it's hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. The church is wonderful. I said the church is wonderful. You're part of a good body of believers? Man, you got people in the front and the back and on both sides. Ready to help you, love you, believe with you, pray for you. It's wonderful. Wonderful. You need a good church. Yes. You know, not only do you need to be there for them to help you, you need to be there to help them. That's right. That's right. Right? Yeah. You need it. Everybody does. Verse 17, when he came to himself, he's messed up bad. He's been unthankful. He's been disrespectful. He has broken every rule and every law. He sinned every sin. And it did not go well for him. And he came to himself, to a realization, and said, how many hired servants of my father's got bread enough to spare? I'm perishing with hunger. I'm out here starving to death. You know, there should come an awareness. You leave where God joined you. Huh? You leave the family God gave you. You leave the brothers and sisters God joined you to. You leave the church. You leave the ministry God joined you to. And after a while, everything's going wrong and you got nothing. Your needs are not met. You don't have peace. You don't have joy. You don't have provision. At some point, you ought to wake up and go, hey, this ain't working. That's right. right? This is, I, I went to, I did the wrong thing. Amen. But the good news is, it's not just what you did. Amen. That's the end of the story. Come on, help me out. It, That's what you do last. It's what you do after word. It's what you do last. Is this good news, church? Yes. This, this is good news. 
It's what you do last. Yes. And are you still breathing? Yes. God's still on the throne? Yes. Then you got time. Yes. You, you got an opportunity. You got time. Somebody say, I got time. I got, I got time. Now the devil's a liar. He'll come sit on your shoulder and go, nah, it's too bad. Nobody will forgive you. It's too, too, too much water under the bridge. You've messed up. You've gone too far. There's no hope. He is a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. And even if somebody didn't forgive you, doesn't mean God won't forgive you. He'll forgive you. And even if you couldn't do some things that you did formerly, it's a big world. There's a lot going on. The Lord can use you somewhere. I said he can use you somewhere if you're available. I will arise and go to my father. Is this where everything changed in that boy's life? This is where it all changed. I am going to get up. Do you have to humble yourself? Do you? Do you have to admit you messed up. Yes. What's he going to say? That's what he's doing right now is figuring out what I'm, what, what I'm going to say. When I get back home, they're going to see me coming back. And, you know, he left haughtily. He left a high roller. He got money. He's young. Got his looks. Got his health. Got the green. Party time. Party time. Party time ain't all it's cracked up to be. Hmm? And all his party friends, as soon as the money's gone, they're gone. Huh? So that ain't no friend. That ain't no friend. He's out there about to starve to death by the pig trough. Came to himself. Came to himself. And one of the realizations is my life is not over. Huh? This doesn't have to be, come on, say it out loud, this doesn't have to be the end of the story. Right? Standing broke by the pig trough does not have to be the end of the story. I know I'm shouting, but it's so wonderful that it's not just all done and over. God is a merciful God. He's a merciful God. He's a gracious God. He's a good God. He's a kind, kind God. He said, I'm going to go to, to, to my father. I'm going to say, Father, I've sinned. And when you've messed up, don't dance around it. Don't play with it. Don't mince terms. Say it. I sinned. I messed up. I blew it. I sinned. I sinned against heaven. And I sinned before you. I'm not, I'm not worthy to be called your son. You, you don't owe me anything. I, I forfeited my rights. But, but could you put me on as a hired hand? I know they got good food in that, in that bunkhouse. <laughs> they eat good out there. He arose, came to his father. When he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. Huh? His father saw him. What did he say? I knew he'd come dragging back in here. <laughs> no. That boy is the sorriest excuse for a son. No. Now the devil will tell you that that's what they think. But this boy got a surprise. And the mercy of God will surprise you. Hallelujah. I said the mercy of God will surprise you. You knew he was good, but when you experience it, you think, I, I didn't know he was this good. You knew he was kind, but when it starts happening, you realize, you get a full realization, you go, oh God, I would not have asked you to be this kind, this merciful. Great way off, his father saw him, had compassion. That means he was moved as to his insides, and he ran, ran. The father ran, grabbed him, fell on his neck, kissed him, pig stinking all. Why? Because like he said later, this my son was lost and he's found. He was dead. 
He was spiritually gone, but he's alive again. Verse 21, the son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. And he's ready to give the rest of the speech, but the father interrupts him. He said, that's good, that's good, boy. He said, bring, you, you, you know that $5,000 suit I just had made? Bring that. He's about my same size. Bring it and put it on him. They probably said, can we wash him first? <laughs> And you know, you know that big diamond ring with the rubies that, that had custom made. Uh, bring that. Put that on his hand. And you know those crocodile shoes. The crocodile shoes. Bring them. Put them on the boy. Did the boy expect this? No. No. Did he deserve this? No. 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 But this is the mercy of God we're talking about. Does God ever change? Is he a respecter of persons? Will he do the same thing today over and over and over again? The problem is not what you've done. It's not as bad as it may be. The problem is not what you've done. It's will you repent? Will you acknowledge I messed up? Will you say I'm coming home? Huh? I'm coming home. Verse 23. Bring the fatted calf. Kill it. Let us eat and be merry. So they had uh, steaks, prime rib, mashed potatoes. I better quit. You're getting hungry. <laughs> he said, my son was dead. He's alive again. He was lost. We got him back. They began to be merry. Hallelujah. I won't go through the rest of it, but the older son, he wasn't happy about it. But you know, he just had to get over it. Huh? You remember the Lord told another parable about those that he sent to work in his vineyard and the ones that worked just one hour. And when they came back, he paid them for a whole day. And the rest of the guys said, what? He said, look, I did you no wrong. We agreed for the same price. It's my money. If I want to be gracious, I'll be gracious. Is it true that some people that only showed up and worked an hour are going to get paid for the whole day? Yes. Oh, yeah. Is God good or is, is God good? Why? And notice when that happened? At the last hour. At the last part of the day. Right before the sun went down. They not, and I'm sure all day they're thinking, man, nothing is happening for us. We're out here all day long. Hours kept creeping by. There, we've missed this one. But the ones that didn't give up and quit, the ones that just stayed in case, they got a day's pay for an hour's work. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Stand on your feet, everybody. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Everybody said out loud, for the Lord is good. And his mercy endures. Let's say it together. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures. Say it again. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures. Hallelujah. And endures meaning it goes on and on. Some translations say forever and ever, but it says it both ways. Say it again. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Forever. 